Greetings, dear ones. It is Saturday, the 10th of April. <clears throat> I apologize for being a little bit late, but um, Facebook has changed things again since even last week. So a um, little bit of readjustment technologically, but I am very, very grateful for the ability to do this on Facebook. So I am um, really kind of excited about the energetics that have been here this week. And I don't know what everyone has been picking up. I would love to hear if you are by any chance um, uh, accessing this live today in real time. <clears throat> Excuse me. I received my second shot this week, and as a result, um, yesterday had a bit of a reaction, so it was not quite up to um, dropping in deeply with a group, because as you may or may not know, the group energetics are a combination of everyone that is here in real time, and everyone who at any point in time listens to the recording because when we're talking about universal energetics or energetics in general um, depending on its frequency the time factor does not play in it is current time whenever you listen to this so um, please if you are here live please jump in and tell me what you've been experiencing this week or so um, what guides uh, energetics um, animal teachers you have been noticing this week in particular because it does change there isn't it isn't actually on a weekly calendar basis but there is kind of a wave of energetics and helpers that come in and really um, combine for the optimum energetics for transformation, both individually and collectively. Um, and then there's the next wave that comes in. So sometimes you might find yourself kind of on the front end of that wave where you're dealing with an issue or an aspect of self or human nature. Um, and the collective is on a different basis, is on a different um, frequency. And then after that, you'll notice uh, maybe more friends or colleagues are kind of addressing the same type of issues. And that's very, very powerful because that means that we are, um, it's another factor in the uh, process of evolution that it occurs both individually and collectively for we are all evolving at this point um, well let me back up not everyone has chosen to evolve and that's quite all right um, they may not continue on through the period of this evolutionary leap whether it be people or animals or ways of being, much needs to die away. Um, I will post some pictures a little bit later of my magnolia tree, which is huge. It's about 30 feet in um, diameter and probably 20 feet high. And normally the blossoms are huge and open up and... Um, really put on a show. This year we had two evenings of very strong frost and it burned the flowers. They were just opening up and so there's a lot of brown. There's a lot of dead on there as well as new blossoms and those that had not begun to open that were still very budded. Um, 
not sure if that's a word. And um, those are now standing out very strong and clear and beautiful. So it's kind of the old mixed with the new or the dead and dying mixed with new life. And again, that theme continues on. Um, we see many things, um, many ways dying out. Um, and as well, many people leaving, many animals leaving. Um, they're finding and they're studying why. They found four huge gray whales in the San Francisco Bay just recently, um, this past week, dead. And um, they're, they're postulizing that it is because they don't have enough food. They're starving to death before they get to their mating grounds in Baja, California. Some have been hit by um, chips. And, you know, that's very, that, that we must take consideration. We must be aware of others around us whether it's other people or other animals or pieces of land. Um, because just so much can die away before it is no longer sustainable. Um, there are not that many gray whales to sustain that species at this point. And so those of you who have attended previous meditations or ancient future wisdom um, events, episodes, you know that this is about an alchemical mix of the energetics, meaning what is here for us, what universal energetics or galactic energetics are presenting themselves, how they're showing up on the earth, um, how it is sparking or catalyzing change within us individually and as a collective. And one of the things that have been standing out this week, which is very, very interesting, is the space between here in the absolute physical, our presence, our body, our physical body experiencing through our senses, through our um, vehicles, this life, the space beyond the veil and what that is, where that is, and how one exists there. Um, and moreover, how we can still be in touch with, communicate with, hear the information from whether it be loved ones or ancestors or um, personages in history or um, even those that according to some in myth and legend did not exist. Many people do believe I have had direct experience with mythological beings. Um, they are very, very much alive. Many of them are in other realms where, again, with that veil being so thin, and I don't usually speak in terms of a veil, because there is a structure within our energy field which you can adjust and dial into different realities. Doesn't mean that you have access to all of them because there are <laughs> billions, um, but it does mean that you have access to those that are pertinent to you, <clears throat> those that you have chosen to have as um, resources through this life, and those that you are working in, in that reality with a soul aspect that corresponds to something you're working in, working on in this reality. 
So there are connections. When and as you come to really know yourself um, and know who you are, the more and more, let me put it this way, the more you know yourself or who you are and who you are not, the more capacity you have to access and channel in information from your <clears throat> other selves which will aid you not only in your daily life but it will also have the opportunity to channel in specific frequencies of energy of knowledge of abilities that will uplift or it will update that's a better way to say it update the human experience here so it really does behoove you <clears throat> excuse me to come to an um a level where you are able to truly communicate with and hear from other aspects of self loved ones that have crossed over ancestors uh, figures from history or mythological beings or what's termed mythological beings who are all just existing in another frequency it's almost I, I liken it often to um, changing the channel on your television and some people are only able to view network television let's say and the few channels that are accessible up to let's say 20 and as you know yourself more your ability to access and channel in information from wider or more um, types of energies gets stronger. So we have, you know, to the point where you are a satellite dish. And that takes a lot of work, a lot of knowing thyself, but in between network television and being a satellite dish, there are a lot of different frequencies, a lot of different channels, a lot of different opportunities for you to receive information. And I think that's the strongest theme this week is listening and um, speaking. And it's, very very difficult to hear from those loved ones that have crossed over or ancestors or guides or whoever when you are partially closed down and that closing down comes from your defense system trying to protect you from feeling that which it deems is too um, big for you, too overwhelming, to something. And yet, if you do not take the opportunity to go into those shadow pieces, into those darker pieces, into the so-called negative, then you are not expanding your capacity. It's like you know, only using certain rooms in your home. You only use a couple rooms and then the whole rest of your home is unused and it becomes, you know, dark and dank and dusty. And when you are willing to go into those shadow places, the rewards are so much greater than the child's fear of what may be felt. And we have this week quite a few different beings helping us that hold or represent that speaking and that listening. One of the things that has been coming up is um, killer whales or orcas. 
and they are being they're inviting us to get in touch with our inner self with um, through meditation and self-searching and soul searching to be able to access that inner guidance and as I mentioned earlier, the notice of the whales, that, that wasn't the only time throughout the, this past week or 10 days that whales have been showing up either for me or clients. Um, and of course, whale represents finding your own song, your uh, unique truth, your unique voice. And so you're being encouraged in many, many ways. We all are being encouraged to truly sit deeply in that um, truth of us and speak it out, whether it's in a business setting, whether it's in your home life. Um, so often people are afraid of the results of saying what they're experiencing to another and that just causes more and more misunderstanding less and less connection and people fall out of um, relationship in that way whether it's with self whether it's with another whether it's with the earth or above all else whether it's with the divine and that's also about receiving. Um, we have, you know, birds have just been so prevalent. I don't know if you've been noticing them. I do hope so. They are here again to help us, to guide us. Um, and the bird song, you know, is very, very particular. It's certainly been referred to and written about throughout history and what it can provoke, what it can inspire in us. I'm very aware of all of the different, I can tell who's in my yard depending on their sound, which birds are in my yard. And so it takes a great deal of listening to get to know which or which, um, which call corresponds to which bird. And I'm saying that because that takes a type of listening. It takes a type of listening with more than just your ears um, to really communicate and connect and um, commune with that animal or that sound or your own voice. And it's something that, you know, we, we've lost so many birds so in the suburbs and in this country. And they're finding out a little bit of the reason why. But again, it is in that movement, that cycling of their lives, that they're moving from one place to the other. Um, Philadelphia, as a matter of fact, I think it's in the week upcoming, they're expecting a large migration of birds and they are going to go black, as many cities have. They're going to turn off their lights at night so the birds do not um, get thrown off on their radar or blinded, as they have done in so many other cities and thousands upon thousands of birds have died. So that's a type of listening. We're listening to nature, a little bit at least. And so, you know, just think of the birds this week. Um, try and find out in your city. Um, I'm closest to Philadelphia, so that's why I'm getting their information. But do look into your city or your township, what they may be doing to recognize this. And of course, you know, less trees, less birds, less birds, less bugs, less bugs, soil erosion, soil erosion, and we come to, you know, not have life on in different areas. So that's bringing it, you know, down to the very 
you know, the very microbes in the soil are vital, as they are in our bodies. Um, our bodies function with completely unconsciously in miraculous ways. Um, this pandemic, this virus has taught us so much about the immune system that we were not necessarily awake, excuse me, aware of. And it is interesting that that's um, the way it is undermining <clears throat> one's health. I, as I said, I did get um, my second vaccination and did have a strong reaction with fever, etc. But as you can see today, I'm perfectly fine. So it's well worth that day of discomfort. I highly recommend um, do your own research, of course, but in all the research I've done and those of you who know me and know my work know that much of it is based in um, scientific discovery, physics, quantum physics, microbiology, etc. And the cell is a most interesting um, <laughs> physical manifestation. Um, and we can help ourselves, ourselves. We can speak to our bodies. We can communicate and connect with and cooperate with and collaborate with our bodies. Um, a fever is a really interesting reaction that the body has. Um, and the more you know about your own inner workings, whether it's physical or emotional or mental, the more ability you have to change it, to design new, to create through. So I encourage you to have a conversation with and listen to yourselves, listen to the animal teachers listen to and when I say listen you know most people think that information is going to come streaming in through your ears in nice clear English sentences and you'll know what to do and how to be led and that's most often not the case it is a question of finding your own languaging with your own guides and teachers and helpers um, certain and, and that brings us to their languaging which is in symbolic form or metaphor and that takes a different type of listening it takes a slowing down it takes a tuning in with more than just your mind because the mind can certainly play tricks on you that's why I've always been grateful to my helpers they actually give me an experience and then within days or, or a week after I receive the information, not just through guidance, but in the physical, what was going on. If it were the reverse, I would have long ago thought that it was my imagination. But having the experience and then receiving information about what it is, whether um, again, through different resources and sources, you will have to come up with your way. I am passionate about teaching people how to connect with, communicate with, cooperate with, collaborate with, and commune with your own inner guidance and your own way of connecting with and listening and speaking to um, guides, helpers, masters, teachers. Again, there's so much here for us. 
And part of this evolutionary leap is to do exactly that, is to be in relationship with ourself, others, our planet, guides, teachers, helpers in a different frequency that are available to us at any moment, at any point in the day or night. So the challenge is finding your references, your languaging. I have clients that, you know, as I teach them, as they get to know who they are and who they are not through really delving deeply into self, you know, when you see a feather right in front of you, let's say, or it shows up in some odd way, for me, that has a particular significance. It can be a particular guide, <clears throat> excuse me, or master that I walk with, <clears throat> excuse me. And over the years, it has also come to indicate that whatever I was thinking, whatever I was just encountering, it is truth. It is right for me. To give you a physical example, I was on my way to get the vaccination. 295 was literally at a crawl. A particular thought came in. I said, I cannot, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to change this. Um, and my guides have been talking about it for quite some time or encouraging me for quite some time. And I said, yes, I get it. Finally, I, I get it. I really get it that this needs to be different. Look down to my left. I was in the far lane, far left lane. Look down and in the gutter along that partitioning wall, that cement wall was a dead hawk. And which certainly, you know, my heart felt immediately but it cannot be for me a larger message. The hawk is a messenger. I work with hawks. They've been around me my whole life. They show up when needed, when significant. And when I was, again, sitting there on the road, <laughs> talking to my guides, saying, all right, I get it, I get it. This has to end. And look down and see a dead hawk that's absolute confirmation for me of what I was just thinking or working with. But for someone else, it may be quite different. So you must learn your own way of languaging. That was just an example of how you can receive validation, confirmation, encouragement, um, reinforcement from anything and everything. I have one client who gets constant information from the clouds, the cloud people. She asks a question, she looks up and the answer is there either in, again, a form of something or the way the clouds are and she interprets that for herself and with the languaging that she's come up with them. So your way is your way. I am, as I said, very passionate about teaching people how to reach that point through the transformation of self. Yes. So I'm just checking my notes. Anything else that has been very strong this week? Um, I would love to share, but I'm not sure how to, in this form, how to bring in something from another screen. But I will post it here on Facebook. An absolutely magnificent um, photo of a cell, like never before seen. 
came through NASA this week. It's been a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of speaking back and forth. Twitter, etc., has been a buzz with this new photo. And again, I was very much aware of and speaking to myself yesterday as I was experiencing a fever and kind of just lay down all day. Um, and we're going to be working with that today very definitely. How to, <clears throat> not how to, but the information from cells, from sounds, from your own voice. And before we do that, I'm just going to ask the oils for a bit of information. These are, as you can see, well, this may be upside down to you, Young Living Essential Oils. I've been using these for over 21 years, and their information is very clear and very pure because these oils are developed in such a way that the plant beingness is still there. That's not the case with other oils where they use a higher temperature or to make it more quickly. So they've been my guides, my helpers, my colleagues for over 21 years. There is, as I said, they're still alive and I respect and honor and acknowledge their wisdom. So let's see what they have to say. When I'm choosing the oils, I actually do not do so through sight. I do so kinesthetically, which means that it is by feel. So they're saying that as you truly sensate, as you feel or experience the essence of who you are, it will enable you to anchor into hope and ward off or be able to um, filter anything that you do not want to take in as well as filter what is being said or what you're speaking out. It is important that we speak out but it is vital how that is done and in the proper moment and in the proper way and from the proper um, position. And by proper, I mean right for you and right for the situation. thereby allowing you to receive um, and expand your psychic abilities. And be in absolute truth, meaning not from a distorted place, using your power in a very soft and subtle and gentle way. And have faith in who you are, both here and beyond here, <clears throat> or the realms beyond. And so now as that message is here for us all, I invite you to hopefully find your sits bones so that you're firmly seated. And those are the bones right in the very center of your buttocks, sometimes just not lifting up, but just pulling out a little bit of the tissue away from. 
That area will let you firmly sit on those sits bones because as you do, it enables you to let your shoulder blades or even consciously allow your shoulder blades to just slide down and inward a bit. And this situates your body in such a way that you're able to sink down and in. We're not going up and out in this type of energetic practice. And that will take you to a particular bandwidth that is of wider mind. I'm inviting you to drop down and in your inner verse, wherein lies all the information you ever need. Tapping into that inner guidance. And I always like to invite everyone <clears throat> to say to themselves or out loud, I am asking and I am allowing my energy field. I am asking and I am allowing my body. I am asking and I am allowing my wider self, which is your soul self. I am asking and I am allowing my guides and teachers and masters. I am asking all times of me all aspects of me to join me here and now assisting me in the inner exploration Orcas are here very, very strongly right now. Nothing you need do if you happen to experience or feel any energetic movement or tingling. But I encourage you not to use your vision or your third eye. but instead to allow the full panoply of possible and potential receptors within you. And as always, <clears throat> the sacred geometric configuration that is here today for all those participating in real Allow yourself to feel yourself, not demandingly, not requiring anything, but simply sensating where your energy field and wider self are guiding you. And it may just seem like you're taking a little nap. 
that's fine. Your system has decided that you need to drop into a deeper state of consciousness to receive the energetic frequencies that are here today. Also aware of and inviting in those that have crossed over for each one of you who are desiring some confirmation, validation, communication. as well as <clears throat> that of the ancestors for your lineage, your family lineage. It's all brought you to who you are in this moment, in this life. Again, just keep allowing your body will help you, your energy field and your wider self know exactly what to do and where to bring and how. Ancient languages are appearing at this point. Those languages, such as Sumerian, ancient Egyptian, and the others that are based in symbols or pictures. as well. There's the birds reminding us that communication can occur in so many ways. is a wonder that we all communicate as humans. Well, therein lies the challenge. We don't communicate as much as we could. But that communication, that 
listening. Must be to oneself first and foremost. Thereby accessing <clears throat> divine information. from your own soul, from your own divinity, thereby being in direct connection, communication with the divine various teachers, masters, guides, so in this moment allow yourself to feel into Feel, listen into your own body, your own selves. Not with any demand, not with any request. But with a very open, curious asking. And a very sincere and welcoming listening. Not with your mind or with your vision necessarily, but allowing yourself to drop deeper still. perhaps sense or sensate there are millions upon millions of reactions, responses, actions, adjustments going on within your body every second. <clears throat> Allow yourself to sink down deeply into that knowledge, that wisdom, that magnificent design which allows you to go about your day and night without having to consciously do anything in order for your body to function. And yet when in cooperation and collaboration
the potential is no ill bounds. You need not follow my words. Computing them through your brain, but let that go and simply sink. Down and in. To your inner verse. Gratitude and honoring to your own selves that make up every part of your body. organs, tissues, glands, microscopic constituent of each cell Just so we are humans, our cells within the great body of this planet, continue to be a destructive force. Metaphorically like a disease within the body of Earth. It is only through the recognition, acknowledgement, connection, 
communication, cooperation, collaboration, and communing. Can we be in harmony? And a beautiful balance of giving and receiving. And as we begin to practice this, with and through our own bodies, it multiplies and grows just as healthy cells in the body so too may we grow and multiply in harmony and balance with our planet. Allow yourself to dip even further down and in, only for a moment or two. Experiencing the miraculousness. Fascinatingly complex design. The deep relationship that can be had. With our very own body being. quite automatically allows for a deepening of the relationship with the divine recognizing, acknowledging Feeling that relationship, that divinity. Within all things. On this planet, in physical form, as well as that which is not entirely in physical form. experienced this type of practice before, <coughs> you may be aware of the 
consolidating and incorporating process at this moment. Nothing you need do, nothing you need follow. Simply sensate, simply experience your own systems way, your energy field and your wider self know exactly how is best to move you from a less physical experience back to a more physical experience in this current time, in this current place. Not forcing anything, for that is using your mind rather than allowing. You will at your own pace. Come to the more physically aware of your surroundings. Your chair, or couch, or floor you're sitting on. The temperature, the light within the room you're sitting in. And I encourage you to have some water. Water is a wonderful way to um, allow for the movement energetically that has occurred within your system to assimilate and be brought more into physical balance after such an energetic practice. Flushing away anything that arose that is not part of your experience in the future, in other words, something that you no longer, is no longer pertinent or no longer need. And I encourage you to explore the listening and speaking to your cells, your body, as well as listening in a wider way this coming week. <clears throat> Whether, again, really allowing a symbolic and metaphoric language to come through without feeling as if, you know, you're not hearing things simply because it's not coming in English sense of sentences. As always, dear ones, I am deeply honored and to honor you, have deep gratitude and love for your presence here on the earth. Until next time, be well, all ways, and in all ways. Bye-bye.